Well, day four of Rose Bowl week is underway here in Los Angeles. AJ Jacobson of Duck Sports Authority, Rivals.com, Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. It was the offense for Oregon today that we got a chance to visit with. First, overall thoughts uh, about what we heard this morning. Well, I thought mostly from the guys and, the, and Coach Arroyo, we heard a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of um, we're ready. Either they understand what a good team Wisconsin is on defense, but at the same time, I think that they have been practicing very well, according to everyone. And so um, I think what we heard was confidence. I think they're ready to go. I, I, w I, I think that. I got the sense they wish the game was tomorrow mm -hmm. rather than a few yeah. days because they're ready to rumble. But uh, no, uh, by and large, we were talking to some very confident young men and, and Coach Arroyo today. Let's go around the room. I began with uh, yeah. Justin Herbert. And the thing that struck me with Justin, he was a lot more open today than yes. I think I have seen him in the four years that we've covered him. And, and what I mean by that is today he really reflected back on his time at Oregon. He knows he's only got one more padded practice practice left yeah. here at the Rose Bowl, and he knows his time is, is coming to an end. And that was really interesting to me. Well, you know, and, and the thing, you kind of dovetail in a little bit with what I've been thinking about Justin Herbert, and that is that he's become so much more communicative and so much more open and so much more... Uh, well, I'm not throwing this out right, but he's he's a better leader on and off the field because he's able to be more vocal and and be more of that type of leader that I, they need from him. So I actually asked him about that today, and I said, you know, are you more comfortable with, with the press than you used to be? And it, and it's not really about the press. My question was more about are you more comfortable right. because it translates to the field. It doesn't matter how he treats us press, but it, but I think it, the way he's more comfortable with us is that he's also more comfortable out there in that role on the field. And and uh, and you could just tell. He's more eloquent. Um, he finds his words easier, and uh, he's very comfortable in front of us. And I, I think that's going to translate into a comfortable quarterback between the hash marks. To that point, I asked Justin about how much he's changed, and he said he was not the quarterback he wanted to be in his freshman season. And he's learned more about being an effective leader, a better communicator, like you just talked about, and an overall leader. And uh, and I think that's really boded, bode well to this game and just his overall uh, quarterback quarterback uh, capability here with, with the Ducks. C.J. Verdell yeah. was, was also a good one we had a chance to speak to today. One thing I asked him was, have you always run with with anger because he's an angry runner isn't he yeah well you know and he is but he's a guy that is a very likable young man you know mm -hmm. so you when yeah. you watch him run you watch him bowling people over you don't realize that he's got an easy smile yeah. that that he's he's probably a, a really fun guy to hang around you know but he's uh he's definitely a guy that can break tackles he can make guys miss i asked him today i said hey you know cj Ferdell, are, are you a guy that can run over people or are you a guy that you know runs around them and he goes oh i i do both mm -hmm. so he's he's very happy with what he's doing out there in the field but, but um, I think that you know the, the fact that he's able to platoon in with other very nice running backs has saved his health this season, and it's a very good situation in the backfield for the Ducks. And certainly for the Ducks to be successful, they're going to need him. They're going to need the offensive line mm. to, uh, to open those holes and for him to run hard. Speaking of the offensive line, I talked to Shane Lemieux. Lemieux, Jake Hansen was also there this morning. Yeah. Shane told a great story about growing up with his, uh, his grandfather and how they used to watch this game together yeah. when he was just a, a young lad. And I thought that was really interesting. That's the thing about these days. You get a chance to kind of get the insight into their, their early life and how they were as kids. Yeah, and you know, it, we've talked to each one of these players many, many times throughout the year and throughout their careers but this gives us a better opportunity to probe a little bit deeper and ask some of the questions that we have been asking them for the last four years and so yeah today we got to talk to them about some personal stuff mm -hmm. kind of fun um, but again you know the, these guys are, are expert at being interviewed at this point in their in their playing careers so um, it's just a lot of fun uh, you know learning more about these guys and when they are willing to open up and these Oregon players seem to be um, it, it's been a good experience even just covering them. I don't know if you if you got this. I got this sense today with both Jake Hansen and Shane Lemieux. One of the questions I was interested in was how are they going to leave this program? Are they leaving it for the better? And what does that line look like next year? And both of them to the man said, you will be surprised. It's going to be a very good offensive line next year. Yeah, it is, I, you know, and the thing is, is, Duck fans have not had a chance to see the people that are going to be replacing them. Right. This unit has been together, except for Panay Sewell. They've been together as a unit since their freshman year, and they've been starting together. So uh, you're seeing, you're going to see almost all new faces. You know, obviously, Panay Sewell's going to be back. But 
I think the guys that are coming to replace him are very highly rated recruits that would have already been playing had they not been behind seniority, you know, have been behind guys that have been starting for so long that I think that's what we're going to see. This talent is going to be new talent. Talent, you know, you, you, Duck fans, you're going to learn a lot of new names on that front line, sure. but they're very, very talented people, highly rated as high school players. And I think they just need to get their chance to show their stuff. Next year's that chance. You know, and let's not forget where this group began four years ago in 2016 they were a four and eight team yeah. they were on the on the verge of just collapse uh mark helfrich was fired that year willie taggart came in for the one year i mean this program was really in amid uh a cr i think a crisis because they had no direction but this group they hung together and look where they are this year you know and it's been a steady progression you know you you had that team that was a very sloppy football team under taggart and then Chris Ball takes over, and one of the things he says is, I'm going to tighten this stuff up. Mm -hmm. He's going to tighten up the penalties, the execution. It's been exactly what he said he was going to do, he's done. And it's been a very rapid yet steady progression in these last two years on becoming a, a team that wasn't very good two years ago to a team that's very, very good in the Rose Bowl this year. So um, my hat is, is off to the players because they're the guys doing all the work. But I think it all comes from the tippy top being Mario Cristobal, yep. the guys he's hired, the, 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 the man he is and the way he treats people is pervasive throughout this program now and and uh, I think that's part of the success is it's they're able to bring these families and these recruits in because of this atmosphere they have and and uh, it, it's it, it's showing on the field and I think it's it's set up to be that way for uh, some time to come right we uh, the last member of the offense that was there today was wide receiver Johnny Johnson the third had a chance yeah. to kind of speak to him about his last game playing with Justin Herbert you can tell he's a little kind of sad about that justin's going to move on to the nfl we all know know that but i think johnny really wants to come out and shine and have a great game for his senior quarterback absolutely and johnny johnson's a guy that is he's from arizona so he's a west coast guy this is a big game to a lot of these young men because they're from here and they've grown up you know watching that rose bowl and that being the big bowl for all these guys and i think there's there's the fact that johnny johnson's from the west coast the fact that he wants to do a great job for this fantastic quarterback he's had justin herbert but at the same time, I mean, uh, I think I actually asked him about, you know, looking to the future. And he, I think Tyler Shuck's a guy that's going to step in real nicely. But, but I think they're trying to reward Herbert for all the greatness that he's yeah. done. Yeah. And I think guys like Johnny Johnson want to go out with a bang for him. And finally, I want to ask you about this. Game one against Auburn way back in September, end of August, September this wide receiving core was depleted yeah. and now they've got a healthy Juwan Johnson, Johnny Johnson. They've got, we don't, we don't know if Micah Pittman's coming back, but we think he is. Jalen Red, of course. I mean, now they are healthy, relatively going to be at full strength. That's a very dangerous wide receiving core. Oh, absolutely. And it's all going to start up front. As long as Herbert's got time, that offensive line's given him time, those skill guys that you just mentioned are going to get open. Uh, now that they're healthy, there's some very good athletes, very fast guys, very good routes these guys are running. So, yes, um, Herbert's going to deliver him the ball. If the offensive line gives him time, all of a sudden he's got all these weapons at his disposal. In addition to the run game, like with C.J. Verdell that we were talking about, you package all that stuff together, and there's not a distinct weakness on this team so long as, as Herbert's getting time, which the offensive line's provided for him all year. So, yeah, I think uh, this is, is the opportunity for the Duck offense to really spread its wings. So day four is in the books here at, in Los Angeles at the Media Hotel. Tomorrow we get a chance to go out to the Rose Bowl itself to Media Day. Only the two deep, the depth chart for both teams will be there to talk to. We'll be out there to cover that tomorrow. And then, of course, it's the team photo in front of the, the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. And, uh, and then it's uh, New Year's Eve where we'll have the coaches press conference and we'll get back to you then as well. So day four in the books. So far, so good here in Los Angeles. A.J. Jacobson of Duck Sports Authority and Rivals.com. I'm Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. We will see you tomorrow.